Greetings Electroculture family. In this video, we're going to go over the step-by-step -step instructions for installing a CW1 paramagnetic electroculture antenna from the fertile current. We're going to be using a 25-foot sectional flag mast as the pole in this, in this video. Post hole has been dug about three feet deep and we're going to add some gravel to the base. The bottom of the pole usually will come with a sleeve that will set in the post hole and then you'll fill around that with concrete, allowing the pole to be removed from the sleeve at any point. These are pretty convenient for mounting the antennas. We're going to check the pole to make sure that it's level. You can install one or two sections at the base to check your level. You don't have to install the whole thing. As you'll see, we're going to use a Geo Ripper trenching chainsaw to make our trench. You don't have to use this by any means. We use these because we install a lot of lines between uh, tight rows, crops, and spaces where you might need to get into uh, really difficult spaces. But um, you can use a trencher that you rent, that you walk behind, it's much easier. This thing is very heavy, but it has its own benefits. You can see there's a line run from the furthest point south in this garden bed to the furthest point magnetic north. You can see I'm trenching along a string that I've run beforehand that goes from point to point. You can see that it's a diagonal line in this case because I'm following the south to north telluric current and it happens to be in a diagonal path in this bed because this bed was made almost a decade ago without the installation of these in mind. I'm just kind of prepping some of the components of the mast. I have the antenna head, the CW1 antenna head mounted on the top section with a mast to mast mount. These are the ceramic insulators that will go up the pole. And the wire that connects from the pole to the ground line will go through these insulators as it travels down. You have to pre-drill a hole with um, a drill bit and then just screw these on in. I'm going to use um, one insulator per section is ideal. This is a mast to mast antenna mount. There are other options for mounting the antenna. You can use a PVC sleeve over the top. The gray PVC is far preferable to the white because it doesn't photodegrade. I'm just lining up the insulators to make sure they are in a nice straight path that will follow the wire down to the ground. I'm connecting the sections of the flagpole with self-tapping metal screws. These small sections of wire will be for attaching the wire to the ceramic insulators as an extra security measure that they don't touch the pole, that the wire does not touch the pole as it traverses down. Here I'm using a brass coupler to attach the antenna lead wire to the ground wire. The ground wire is 12 and a half gauge galvanized steel. And as you can see, the lead wire coming out of the antenna is copper. These are pure brass couplers and they are rated for underground use, but they're very nice and easy to use. You can see that the shrink tubing is slipped over ahead of time so that once you have it connected, you can slip the shrink tubing back over and heat it up. This will protect the coupling from weather over time. Now that it's attached, I'm just going to go ahead and kind of pre-roll out the wire alongside the trench so that I can cut a lot of the excess wire off at the end and make it easier to deal with. This is those pieces of wire from the from a minute ago 
I'm just attaching the wire to the front face of those um, ceramic insulators. These are the magnet stacks coated in beeswax signal boosters that will go on the ground wire. You can see they're pre-marked with a red marker and that mark is on the southern side, the magnetically southern side of that magnetic stack. And they will go in line with the telluric current, just like our ground line and just like the brass rod on the antenna head. Those will all be lined up from magnetic south to magnetic north. I'm getting the magnetic stacks that are on the line now spread out in an even interval. I'm preparing this dowel rod for the termination point at the northern point of the line. I'm going to put a couple holes in it that are about the size of the 12 and a half gauge galvanized steel line. Cut off some of the excess. And throw it over the fence. This is a nice way to get your ground line terminated. You can see I've gone through the holes in the stick. Now I'm going to cut a little bit extra off. And that, that bottom piece will go down into the ground into another post hole that I've made already that goes much deeper than the furrow. So the trench is about 12 or 14 inches deep, let's say, and your termination point will be down around 20 inches because you'll drive it in further and get it as deep as you can in the ground for your negative point. Then you will refill this hole with the, with the dirt as you will the trench. I'm aligning the brass telluric rod to magnetic south, adjusting it by twisting the pole slightly. And this is the final step. Make sure everything is secure and everything is in place. Thank you very much for watching this video. We're going to post some stills of the finished product at the end.